Hello everyone, my name is Kobayashi Daisuke. I belong to Fujitsu as a software engineer. I work as developer in the OSS community. I have been involved in Kubernetes development two years and I acquired ZKA. In this section, I will talk about introducing a log tracking feature that revolutionizes observability of the Kubernetes. As a feature to evolve the observability of Kubernetes, we will introduce the logging function that we are currently considering with the technical leader of Kubernetes community. If this function is introduced, even if many user operations are issued at the same time, it is possible to easily extract how a specific user operation was processed from the huge log of each component of Kubernetes. And the time required for troubleshooting will be greatly reduced. This is today's agenda. First, I will explain the mechanism of Kubernetes itself to make our proposal easy to understand. Second, I will talk about Kubernetes logging and show the problems for the Kubernetes logging we are thinking about. Next, I will talk about the future we are proposing. And finally, I would like to introduce the implementation issues we are facing now. First topic is overview of Kubernetes. What is Kubernetes? Simply put, Kubernetes is container orchestration tool. Its feature includes three points. First point is container deployment and resource allocation. Second point is container lifecycle management. And a third point is container network management and container connectivity. Kubernetes was developed by Google and released as OSS. Originally, it is based on Google's in-house system. And it was donated by Google to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, so CNCF and it is currently managed and operated by CNCF. It is now the de facto standard for container orchestration tools. The advantages of using Kubernetes include four points. First point is automating manual container management and monitoring. Second point is automating the deployment of developed applications. Third point is mass container status monitoring and logging on multiple nodes. A fourth point is automatically scaling when the processing load is concentrated. From the next page, I will explain how Kubernetes is configured and how these functions are realized. Kubernetes has a declarative operation mechanism for automatic management and monitoring. A declarative operation means that the application is executed by describing and defining the elements and conditions to be deployed in the cluster in YAM JSON. This definition does not describe how you want your application to run, but what you want it to be in the end. By this mechanism that we define the desired state, Kubernetes realizes uh, automating the cluster management. Since the definition is coded, we can check the change history with a version control system such as Git.
If you need to update the application, you can do it just by changing this code. So all you have to do is change the code. It seems difficult to do everything from container deployment to operation just by defining the final state of the cluster. Then, how realize the declarative operation? This is realized by reconciliation loop. I will explain this reconcile mechanism. In this reconciliation loop, Component always compares the user-defined desired state with the actual state, which is the state of the system. When the actual state equals to the desired state, the component does nothing. If there is difference between the two states, the component updates the system state along the desired state. By making such a mechanism, various automation such as uh, auto healing is realized. What does Kubernetes cluster consist of? The Kubernetes cluster consists of a control plane and nodes, like this picture. The control plane manages the worker nodes and the port in the cluster. The worker nodes host the ports that are the components of the application workload. The control plane has components such as API server, etcd, controller manager, scheduler, and cloud controller manager. In the node, there are components such as Kubernetes and Kubeproxy. What is control plane doing? The control plane's component make global decision about the cluster, for example, scheduling, as well as detecting and responding to cluster events, for example, starting up a new port when a deployment replica field is unsatisfied. I will explain what each component of the control plane is responsible for. The API server is a component of the Kubernetes control plane that exposes the Kubernetes API. The API server is the front end for the Kubernetes control plane. It accepts the request, determines if it is valid, and processes it. It is only component that communicates with etcd. etcd is a key value store that holds all data about cluster state and configuration. The cluster behaves according to the state stored in this etcd. Scheduler watches for newly created pod with no assigned node and selected the node for them to run on. It determines the node to schedule according to various con conditions such as cluster state and user settings. Controller manager runs multiple controller processes. Each controller manipulates the object and updates the cluster to move the current state to the desired state. So what is node doing? The node runs an application deployed in the cluster. In addition, the node component runs on all nodes, manages running ports, and provides a runtime environment for Kubernetes. The node components are described below. Kubelet is an application that communicates with the control plane. 
Kubelet confirms that the container is running on the port. If the control plane needs some processing in the node, the Kubelet will take action. Kube proxy is a network pro proxy for facilitating Kubernetes network services. Kube proxy lives on the packet fitting layer of the operating system or, or the forwarding of the traffic itself to handle network communication inside and outside cluster. So, I have explained the basic components of Kubernetes. Kubernetes uses the component just described to enable container orchestration. Kubernetes components work independently and run an application. I will describe some of the objects that Kubernetes defines to run an application. Kubernetes objects are persistent entities in the Kubernetes system. Kubernetes uses these entities to represent the state of the cluster. Kubernetes provides several built-in workloads. For my explanation, I will introduce three workloads. Pod is the smallest deployable unit of computing that we can create and manage in Kubernetes. A pod is a group of one or more containers with shared storage and network resources and a specification for how to run the containers. A pod's contents are always co-located and co-scheduled and run in a shared context. A pod models an application-specific logical host. It contains one or more application containers which are relatively tightly coupled. In non-cloud contexts, applications executed on the same physical or virtual machine are analogous to cloud applications executed on the same logical host. A replica set purpose is to maintain a stable set of replica pods running at any given time. As such, it is often used to guarantee the availability of a specified number of identical pods. A deployment provides declarative updates for pods and replica sets. We describe a desired state in a deployment, and the deployment controller changes the actual state to the desired state at controller rate. We can define deployments to create new replica sets or to remove existing deployment and adopt all their resources with new deployments. Kubernetes uses these components and objects to realize container orchestration. Second topic is programs for Kubernetes logging. We are proposing enhanced logging capabilities. So first, let's talk about the outline of the log and the current problems. First, I will talk about the logging function of Kubernetes. Let's talk about the overview of Kubernetes logging. There are four logs in Kubernetes. Just a pod log, event log, component log, and audit log. Pod log is standard output and error output of applications running on the pod. 
It's mainly used for troubleshooting for applications. Event log is logs for events that occurred in the Kubernetes cluster. It is mainly used for troubleshooting for Kubernetes cluster. The components log is individual log for each, compo each Kubernetes component, such as Kubernetes and API server. It is mainly used to follow more details in the other operations than the event log. Audit log is log for HTTP request response to and from API server. It is used for security, audit, etc. The pot log and event log are often used for troubleshooting. If we cannot narrow down the code with these two logs, we need to look at the component logs. When it comes to investigating component logs, investigating can be a bit tricky. Let's talk about why. The problem we want to solve is that the investigating logs across component is difficult. Why is troubleshooting with component logs so difficult? This is because the components are distributed and the logs are also distributed, which makes it difficult to correct and analyze logs. Therefore, it is difficult to investigate logs across components. In Kubernetes, multiple components work as an extension of any operation, such as uh, control apply. Therefore, if you want to follow a series of operations inside the cluster, a log analysis across components is required. However, the Kubernetes component log is output independently for each component. So, it is necessary to extract the related logs from each component logs and associate them. Not only are the components distributed, but there are other factors that make investigating difficult. It is difficult to link requests and processes. Why is it difficult? This is due to the Kubernetes architecture. Kubernetes stores the desired state of the cluster in ETCD such as a number of deployments. So each component only communicates with the API server to compare the current state with the desired state in etcd. If component finds a difference, it works to keep the actual state in the desired state. This means that each component does not communicate as a component. Moreover, components work to keep the cluster state in the desired state, not one request satisfaction. Since each component is driven independently according to desired state, the log is also output independently. So, in what case would it be difficult to investigate? For example, we want to investigate the code when the port moves for some reason. In this case, we can investigate how the port was created from the logs of the newly created pod and the logs of other components. However, it is difficult to investigate why the original pod was moved. 
This is because each component works independently and the connection between processes is not clearly shown. In this case, the reason the port moves may be in the loads of the original node, but it's not clear when fit node it is. So the larger the cluster, the longer this investigation will take. Third topic is feature we propose. In this topic, I will introduce the overview of this feature. And I show in first scene this feature can be used effectively. So first solution idea. Troubleshooting the Kubernetes is difficult because of this architecture. To solve this, I want to be able to easily correct and analyze distributed logs. I thought that it would be better to give a unique ID to the processing log output by each component as a result of the request of the user or controller. Here is an overview of the idea. Each component of Kubernetes cluster does necessary processing in response to user requests. The processes of each component and the first request are linked with a unique ID, so called trace ID. By assigning the associated trace ID to the log output by each component, Distributed logs can be easily corrected and analyzed. There are an appearance of what happens when the trace ID is output to the log. As an example, I extracted the log related to the deployment creation operation. In this example, the processes of Creating a deployment is distributed across multiple components, so I just have a controller manager and Kubernetes. The processing log is output in a distributed manner in multiple component logs. We are trying to output trace ID to the log. The related processing can be extracted by using the trace ID given at the end of these logs as a key. By extracting the logs using trace ID as a key and organizing them in chronological order, it will look like this figure. In this way, it is possible to grasp the processing flow to investigate the cause from the error log. We can correct the log by using stress ID assigned to the error log as a key. When actually correcting and analyzing logs, it is assumed that other OSS will be used such as Elasticsearch and Kibana, and so on. This feature can reduce the time it takes for cluster administrators to troubleshoot. For example, suppose the cluster administrator looks at the error log when something goes wrong with the cluster. He wants to investigate the reason why the cluster output this error. The error log is given a trace ID that associates with the related processes. The cluster administrator extracts the logs by that trace ID. Then he can discover at once how the cluster behaved before the problem occurred.
If he go back to the log we found, he can easily find out what caused the problem. From the next page, I will introduce in what kind of scene this feature can be used concretely. Usage 1 is tracking the user request behavior. When the user makes kubectl apply request, the request causes multiple components to work. There may be use case where we want to track the behavior of components driven by this request. In this case, the trace ID will be generated when the user request arrives at the API server. Later, when saving the object to ATCD, the trace ID will be given to the object and saved with it. Then, the components detect the creation of this object and it works. The component refers to the object, processes it, and at the same time, propagates the trace ID and outputs it in the log. After that, the related component performs those processes in the same way, and the trace ID is output to all log of the processes related to the request. So using trace ID, we can extract the logs that is related to the user request. We thought extracting logs in chronological order to keep track of what component did what the original request did. In this way, it is possible to grasp the processing flow. Finally, we can track the user request behavior using related logs like this red line. Usage 2 is tracking the cause of operation. Currently, port is running on the node. So, the port has moved to another node for some reason. The following example is when we notice this move and we want to track down its cause and behavior. Even this time, we can easily track it by using the future. First, if we notice that the port is moving, check the trace ID given to the airport. Then, by using trace ID, we can extract the component logs related to the port moving by arranging the logs in the chronological order, it is possible to track what was done in the cluster before the pot moved. So we can graph the following processing flow. If we check the extracted logs, we can see the pot moved because of problem with node. By quickly finding the nodes where the error occurred, the range of impact of the failure can be reduced. Here, the investigation of the logs will help track down the cause of nodes problem. The third example is when we find a system failure. For example, a node problem, and we want to see what happened as a result of this node failure. First, we notice that a node problem occurs 
and we get the trace ID from this curved log. Then we extract the related logs by trace ID, as in the previous example. We can extract the logs of the processes that were triggered by the problem of this node. By analyzing this log, we can see which component did part with this failure. Okay, so finally. We can see first when job affected by this node problem. I will summarize the specification for ID assignment and propagation required to meet these use cases. First, the timing of ID generation. There are um, two main types of event to give a new trace ID. So, one is when the user request is received. The other is when a change in the actual state is de detected due to a system failure or the like. The original trace ID is inherited for the request generated as a change action by the code controller. At the point, if multiple requests occur before the request is processed, all the requests related to the processing can be traced. Regarding log search, we can search the component log from stress ID related to the error or the stress ID given to the event. The component log is timestamped and can be displayed in the order of occurrence. First topic is how to realize the future. I will talk about overview of realization. So first I will talk about our realization plan here. The element to realize our idea is these four points. So first, we generate an ID for the request to API server. So this is realized by the KP API server tracing. Second, it gives the generated trace ID to the object. So trace ID information is stored in etcd. We run. Next, when the components work, it gets trace ID from the object. Then, to propagate the acquired trace ID during processing and output it to the component logs. So, I will explain the overview using a figure. First, use apply the manifest. For example, keep control apply. This request comes to API server and new trace ID is generated as API server. The API server makes Kubernetes object and persistent it to etcd. We plan that API server stores the trace ID to the object in etcd at the same time. The next step, a component detects the change of the desired state, so the object is created. The component starts the reconciliation loop, then it gets object information. This information includes trace ID. Next, 
the component output the trace ID to the component log and propagate trace ID to other components. These components also get the trace ID and output it to the component log. By doing this, we think we can link from request to processing with a unique trace ID. Next item is implementation issues. We are facing various problems with the implementation of this feature. So I will introduce them. There are implementation issues in the following situation. Issue 1 is multiple requests are the cause of processing. Issue 2 is multiple components operate in a chain with one request. Issue 3 is the object to be processed is different from the object of the trigger. Issue 4 is the requesting and processing components are not one to one. So I will explain these issues. So this section describes the case that multiple requests are the cause of processing. In Kubernetes, each component works independently and works to satisfy the desired state. Therefore, depending on the timing of the request, multiple requests may be processed at once. In this case, it is necessary to associate multiple IDs with the processing. So it is desirable to output two trace IDs in the log. The first challenge is to achieve this behavior. The second point is that multiple components work in a chain with one request. In Kubernetes, one request may cause a component to work, and that component behavior may cause other components to work. For example, if we request to create a deployment, so the deployment controller will also create a replica set. Then the replica set controller works. This means that multiple components work in a chain with one request. Therefore, we need to propagate the trace ID to each of the components that work here. However, the behavior of each component is independent. So, the issue is how to link them. Issue 3 is that the object that triggers the process and the object that is processed may be different. In this figure, an object means A triggers the operation of B's controller. At this time, the detailed trace ID is given to the object A. But B controller processes only the B object, so B controller cannot get trace ID AAA. Therefore, there is a problem that B controller wants to use the trace ID of A that is triggered, but B controller cannot get the trace ID. To give concrete example, the replica set controller may take action when the pot is updated. It is difficult for the replica set controller to identify the pot that triggered the action. The issue is how to propagate trace ID to controller that does that not process the trigger object in this case.
Issue 4 is the case where the requesting and processing components are not one-to-one. -one. The figure shows an example in which edge controller and width controller operate triggered by a request to an object named A. In this case, it is necessary to propagate the trace ID issued in one request to multiple components. Give trace ID to A and propagate it to the component, but the B controller cannot get the trace ID given to object A. Here is concrete example. The scene consider is seen in fit the replica set and deployment controller operates triggered by the update of replica set. Updating the replica set will run the controller manager. From fit the replica set controller and deployment controller will run. At, the, at this time, replica set controller processes the update it replica set. So it can get the trace ID of the request that triggered it. However, the deployment controller handles the deployments that manages the replica set. At this time, the information that trigger was replica set is lost in the process of Enqueue to the work queue by event handler in this figure. Therefore, it becomes impossible to get the trace ID of the request that triggered it from the deployment controller. The problem is how to resolve the missing link. So we need to think of an implementation that can solve these challenges. And in addition, the solution must have the least impact on performance. So final chapter is the current status. So we propose in KP to enhance the login function. We are thinking of an implementation and system design that can solve all implementation issues. We want to make to it a more valuable feature by adapting the needs of various operators. So last, I summarize these contents. Okay, I show the today's agenda here. So, as a feature to evolve the observability of Kubernetes, I introduced the login function that we are currently considering with the technical leader of the Kubernetes community. If this function is introduced, even if many user operations are issued at the same time, it is possible to easily extract how a specific user operation was processed from the huge log of each component of Kubernetes. And the time required for troubleshooting will be greatly reduced. Okay, thank you for listening my presentation.